and really saw some, some exponential growth in the generative AI space uh, over the past several months. Um, right now, onboarding around 6,000, 7,000 new users a day. And when we optimize one product, we're optimizing every field. So we're optimizing the title, header tags, product description, meta tags, meta description, you name it. So from your perspective, and we've heard it a lot, you know, and, and we were somewhat accused early on of being like an SEO agency killer. So welcome to episode 43, Me Money Talks. Yeah, I'm just going to put this a little bit closer to you guys. Yeah, fix both of you up. All right, episode 43. We're gonna today. We're gonna be talking about Writerly and these two guys, uh, Writerly and also Ecom. These two beautiful, beautiful looking guys. You know? <laughs> really are <laughs> best looking software owners and operators. But we'll have you guys introduce yourselves because we don't want to butcher your story, your names either. And uh, we'll we'll kind of get into a little bit more about your story and also the, just the story of Writerly and Ecom. Right. So yeah, thanks guys. Uh, John Ricketts, uh, co-founder and, and CEO of Writerly. Um, Based out of Tennessee, and uh, happy to be up here in Brooklyn at uh, at our offices up here today. Josh Grossman, I uh, do uh, I run products at Riderly, Chief uh, Operating Officer and Chief Product Officer. Um, I was employee number one, so been on a team since since day one, back in August, and uh, yeah, I live out of Brooklyn, in Bushwick. I think this is a really interesting uh, podcast that we're doing because. Generative AI is a big, obviously, topic in like the world right now, like open AI, chat GPT, all this stuff. And I think we like talked about before, you guys are trying to find an avenue that like we can really use this at scale, really automate the use of it. So you guys launched Ecom, right? Right. With a K. With, so, with a K. Not to be confused with a C. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the site for Ecom to get to Ecom? Ecom.ai. Ecom.ai. Perfect. And what Ecom.ai is, I'm not going to say I'm going to let you guys say it. I'm not butchering it. So keep in mind, obviously, majority of our audience, Ecom brand owners, agency owners, right. investors. So maybe explain it to them like they're and 12 year olds. And they showed this to us before this. And I was like, what the fuck? Blown, blown away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but please t t tell us what it is and we'll, we'll start off there. So I, I, I want to make it a practice to let, to let the head of product uh, talk, <laughs> that, yeah. talk about his own product. So I don't want to steal his thunder, but. To kind of frame it up, uh, Riderly AI uh, is is the company, and we're a generative AI application layer software uh, platform. And we launched uh, early 2022 with a beta product, or really more of an alpha product, moved into beta uh, November of 2022, and really saw some, some exponential growth in the generative AI space uh, over the past several months. Um, Right now, onboarding around 6,000, 7,000 new users a day. Um, and, and, yeah, it's yeah, awesome, man. It's, 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 it's still, yeah. still going up, but it's, it's a credit to the team and, and obviously the product that was built. But we were very fortunate that when we launched, you know, ChatGPT came out right after us. And so that created a massive tailwind. So it's not, you know, I think from a marketing standpoint, we were really benefited by that. But Riderly, you know, really at its core is, is more of a broader horizontal generative AI platform that appeals to marketers, that appeals to content creators um, across a number of different verticals. So it's, hey, whatever your content needs are, um, we've got a fantastic platform that's built with some really cool enterprise features. It, it, it promotes sort of teams and sharing and, you know, uh, it, it does some really good stuff. But what we discovered early on is that the future of generative AI is, is not in a horizontal offering. It's, it's where can you go vertical um, to have a much larger impact from a technology perspective. And so the users, our, our growing user base on Riderly sends, they, they, they contribute a lot of data points um, relative to the overall platform. And one of those pieces of data is what, what are they using? Which template are they using? What's the use case? And so early on, um, product descriptions, and we're talking like a year and a half ago, were, was one of the leading templates uh in the platform and so it really sort of when you say product descriptions what do you mean exactly so create a product description from just a few inputs. so like an online product description totally. thing yeah so so yeah. we have a template you, you enter a couple of inputs and and it produces a, an seo optimized full-scale product description right mm -hmm. 
And that was really interesting. And we had a lot of people doing it. Um, and then uh, we had some opportunities uh, to have some further discussion about what does it look like to be able to scale that, to take it from from just doing one at a time to potentially thousands out of the time, right? And and that's that's a testament to the power of, of what generative AI can do. And then we took it a step further. We were over in London in March at a, a retail conference. And it became very evident that that the need to fill was, hey, a lot of retailers uh, are, are, that have physical space are you know, still selling physically uh, while they wait on digital assets to be created and really losing out on, on some significant revenue opportunities to, to sell digitally. And we said, look, let's, let's, let's go to work. And we, we sat down with some really smart people who guided us on what this should look like. And we turned it over to Josh and the product team and said, go to work. So Josh is a genius. <laughs> yeah, Josh, he's Josh, he's Josh, yeah. brains behind there. <laughs> I've got smart guys behind me. 100%. I'm a very masterful thief. <laughs> I like that. Explain that one. <laughs> to me, like, I don't create. I combine. Right? At the core ethos of e is a certain humility. And like, look, we're just combining data sources that are not currently combined. We're combining SEMrush, SE Rank, AHREF, right? Data providers on search intents, keywords. We're combining Google Analytics, Google Search Console, user behavior. And finally, actually not finally, we got two more, two more. We combine the CMS, right? The user's data. And then finally, we combine the language model. That's OpenAI, AWS, um, hugging face, Anthropic. We got a lot of different LM providers, right? And the problem with like a lot of generative AI is like people look at it like this, like <laughs> robot or like this, this mind. It's not, you know, AI as core is a statistical regression. What's, what's a regression for everyone who doesn't know statistics? It's, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's like a line of best fit, right? You got historical data. Pretty much like all those dots on the screen and like fit a line right down the middle. You got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now those dots is that X and Y, uh -huh. they're words. Yep. Oh, I see. Okay. They're words and then what they mean. Gosh. That's the X and the Y is the what they mean. And so it's basically like, like when you're, this is like mind blowing. Keep going. <laughs> and you were a geologist Let before this. Right? <laughs> yeah, you were a geologist. <laughs> well, to, to me, that's key, right? Like, Geology is like all about systems. So I studied petroleum geology, like how, how oil gets made over time, over millions and millions of years inside the earth. Um, and it's just, it, it's a process, right? One thing follows the next thing. And AI, it does really good with small steps, but you give it a big leap, it might falter, right? So what we do is we combine all this data we're pulling in to guide AI with like extreme guardrails, right? We're not an AI centric AI company. We're, we're an AI company who's like, AI is not that big a deal. I like that. It's not that big of a deal, but it is a big deal. It's powerful. Yeah. It's extremely powerful when you combine it with lots of data, lots of data inputs, powerful automation, algorithm, human checking, mm -hmm. yeah. right? No, making sure you know, but we, we have automated a lot of that. So for example, like e-com right now, e-com with a K. E-com with a K, e baby. with a K. We were looking at it before, a lot of it's like kind of content on steroids pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Like changing content, optimizing content on steroids, not just having like a person do it on the back as pretty much yeah. pushing towards, right? Now, I think a lot of people in say the D2C space, the e-com space don't see the, and don't, it's hard to see the value of content mm -hmm. at a certain scale. Once you get, Past a certain point, you're like, oh, wow, there's actually value with this. I get yeah. free organic traffic, yeah. which is cheaper than spending pay yeah. on Meta, Instagram, Twitter. Often more scalable. It's, so. uh, it's more yeah. scalable. It's an actual asset on the internet, right? Yeah. So like, how do you guys think through that as kind of like, say, messaging to like these customers that you want to go against? Because like, for example, I know like an e-commerce brand doing like 10 million a year, right? Are they thinking, all right, how am I going to make a whole website of blogs right now? Or like, do I even have blogs? It's They're, they're probably not, right? No. Mm. Do you want to push them to do that or? It's not about the blog. It's all about the blog. It's, it's not about the, I mean, me, you, you need a certain level of domain authority. Okay. Right. You should probably have two or three blogs. 
but that's not what's going to drive your revenue, mm. right? What econ, econ is built to drive revenue outcomes. And the way we do that is, right, we got the diagnosis. We're looking at once you connect your CMS, you connect your Google Analytics, you connect, and we're already built in natively to SEMrush, SE Rank. Yeah, we got, we got Shopify, Magento, um, Salesforce, WooCommerce, and Magnolia. So when you really look at it, like we set out to build, like we have, we have, think broad. We have these tools in other areas, right? And to your point about what does it matter? What does it matter about these unperforming digital assets? Like maybe I'll just try to spend my way through it on pay, paid ads. We have this same technology uh, in, in wealth management, right? We have portfolio optimizers. Mm. You, you, you care about your financial assets because you want them to perform. And those that underperform put you at risk. And there's tools through software that can reallocate and rebalance when, when risk is, is sensed at a certain level. And that's what e-com is. It's a, it's a digital asset portfolio reoptimizer. And Interesting. When, when you look at it, uh, and, and we talked to a lot of our customers, in fact, you know, one that we had a conversation with yesterday, really fall into that sort of Pareto principle where 80% of your revenue is coming from 20% of your products or your SKUs. Yeah. And what that does, it, it creates an interesting dynamic. And you, you get sort of some game theory and logic that's applied. Do you double down on those 20%? Do you pay attention to the 80% that aren't driving much or underperforming? And so what we set out to do was say, look, these are digital breadcrumbs that are being completely ignored. These are just zombie assets that are, that are sitting out on the web. It's not driving any traffic, no conversions, certainly not much engagement, and then ultimately no sales. Mm -hmm. So how do you energize those zombie assets in, a, in an automated way that doesn't require manual intervention? And so we looked at things like uh, we, we, we took from, from wealth management and, and portfolio rebalancing. It's fully automated, right? The same thing was applied to e-com. And another, another analogy that, that I, I like to use, I spent almost a decade in, in healthcare, and I think one of the most brilliant pieces of medical technology that's ever been created um, is, is, uh, is a pacemaker. And most people think that a pacemaker is, is beating and keeping your heart in rhythm and, and keeping people alive, which it is. Behind the scenes of a pacemaker is the combination of both a diagnostic and a therapeutic. And we look around at a lot of software and we see that you either get one side of the coin or the other. You either get software that tells you what's wrong or you get software that says, hey, you have to look over another piece of software at what's wrong. And, but we have, we have yeah, a way to fix it. Yeah, right? We just do both, right? We do yeah. both. Yeah, so <laughs> we wanted to create the pacemaker <laughs> of software. I like that. that. That delivered not only a diagnostic, but let's, let's address this. Let's fix it right now. You don't have to send this out if you don't want to. Like it needs to be, there's intervention performed right now. And I think that's, that makes sense on a lot of levels, but we need tools in our lives. We need more tools in our lives that not only identify, but take corrective action. Okay. And, and, that's, what, and that's what Josh and his team have built. So, so what's an example of one of the assets that you would take corrective assets? Because there's action on, because there's many assets. Little, in the yeah. Yeah. Business I think like a brand, for example, that like would, yeah. Would benefit a lot from this. Like if you want to walk. Anyone, uh, anyone who sells online can benefit extremely yeah. from the software. Yeah. So to your question about like, what are we optimizing? So that's a setting in your autopilot settings. You select which fields we're optimizing. And when we optimize one product, we're optimizing every field. So we're optimizing the title, header tags, product description, meta tags, meta description, you name it. Right. And we'll, we'll be adding images to the platform as well inside of two weeks. So say like a company like, like we're good friends with Avi, right? Avi is like a women's college brand. They probably do. Like, yeah. They're on like 40 million, 40 months. It's like what they yeah. advertise. Yeah. They, they, they kill it. They have a whole bunch of SKUs all like women's college brand, right? Yeah. And you're saying that pretty much because they've had all this traffic to their site, all years of existence, they have like a good, um, what's it called? Score? The, the, like SEO ranking. Like SEO yeah, ranking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have these assets on Google pretty much that rank at a certain place. Yeah. And you're saying if you plug in e -com, in a sense, you will either hold their spot or increase their spot. Yeah. And the first, the first rule of e-com, and this comes a lot from John's medical background, is first do no harm, right? So if you have performing assets, 
we don't necessarily touch those. What is up, New Money Talks fam? Super, super excited to hop on here to shout out our amazing sponsor, Printful. You've definitely heard of these guys, but if you haven't, you need to check them out. These guys are amazing for so many things. But honestly, two things are amazing. Look, if you want to start a business, print-on-demand business, it's amazing. You can literally plug these guys into your Shopify store, and they're on WooCommerce, Wix, you name it, they're on it. Amazing integration. But what you could do, you could start a business tomorrow. Any logo, any design you want on a hat, on a shirt, shorts, joggers, backpacks, mugs, you can make it and not have any inventory. You can drop ship it all from Printful. They're amazing. That's number one. Number two, if you own a business, wow, like you should be ordering from Printful. For ship dudes, we do it. I know for Kyle at Scale Brands, they do it. All merch, hats, backpacks, polos, uniforms. It's less, look, fast shipping, great quality, great prices. You just can't beat it. And also it's low batch. You don't have to order 100 units. You can order one at a time. And the quality is just amazing. We love these guys. You should check them out. We have our link in the description slash NMT. Use the link. We appreciate it. It helps out a whole bunch. And honestly, Printful, there's no one better in this space. So if you need merch, we're about to have some new Money Talks merch. They're amazing. Printful is the way to go. Check them out. Printful, if you don't know them, you should know them now. New Money Talks fam, I'm telling you, you guys are the best in this space. Anyways, back to the episode. Appreciate you guys. Our proprietary algorithm is built to identify your bottom X percent, and that's a setting. So you can choose, like, do you want e-com to focus on your bottom 80%? Mm. Or do you want e-com to only focus on your bottom and apply the top 20%? Exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's a setting. Because at the end of this, we want users to maintain complete control over their own digital assets. Yes. Ecom is just a facilitator. It's just a tool, but ultimately you own how it's deployed and how it's used. Definitely. Yeah. And before we were talking, me and Kyle were like, this is going to get rid of all SEO agencies. This is like, and Or like, compliment them. Or, and you were like, well, no, it's going to help them. It's helpful, right? <laughs> See, she's like, I'm an agency yeah. owner myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, uh, I think it helps uh, decrease a lot of cost. Like, human yeah, cost yeah. In it. Totally. And honestly, might make, the job might get done even better than if a human did it, right? Yeah. Like that's I'd like to think so. You like to think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Okay. Like, how do you like test? Like, how you guys even how do you prove that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So we will we talk several trials. Yeah, yeah. The trials actively running right now. Um, I don't know, John, if I could share or share part of his trials. Um, on this, I think you can share the 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 data for sure. Like what we're starting to see. I mean, I I'm I'm happy to answer. So what we're like, you know, we're also at the at the end of all this is what's the outcome. Right, like if you if you if you subscribe or you buy a piece of software like e and you're paying a monthly subscription fee, um, what should the outcome be? And that's that outcome. Obviously, we want to generate sales. We want to grow our sales, grow revenue, ROI, things. But you get a little more granular, and you get down to things like, I want to improve engagement in a particular product category. Right. So you have the ability to bifurcate or trifurcate your particular outcomes based on your library. This is not a one size fits all approach. So for you at your agency, you may want to scale, right? You may want to take on more brands, but hiring content writers and copywriters is stuff, right? Uh, yeah. It's hard. It's, yeah, it's, hard. it's expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's a low margin business for that reason. It doesn't and scale. It, and it yeah. takes a long time to turn, to write copy and to turn good product descriptions around. So from your perspective, and we've heard it a lot, you know, and, and we were somewhat accused early on of being like an SEO agency killer. No offense. That might go viral. So we don't, we don't need to do SEO. <laughs> no, <this> is, <laughs> we're paid ads, creative. So, yeah. so even better because if we're helping organic. Yeah. Right? So this is, I, it, I think this is an agency product personally. I don't, we don't want to kill agencies. We want to work with agencies. I think we want to work with end users. Um, this is a product that benefits everyone in the ecosystem and and can deliver a lot of value in terms of whatever it is from the agency perspective. You've got different outcomes than a D2C brand has different things that they're focused on. For sure. I have a question. Are you guys familiar with Clavio? Like Cloud Media yeah. Clavio? So they're very good at like attributing you spend, say, three thousand dollars a month on Clavio, and then we generated you like a hundred thousand this month. Is there a way that you guys can like attribute all what you're doing to a certain actual revenue number? They're better than some of it. They're better yeah. than <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so we have within our dashboard kind of an outcomes section. Yeah. I think the thing 
right? We touch organic search as well as conversions because we're touching the actual assets themselves. And so the reason why we touch conversions, I say, is because there's really two sides to SEO. One side is the algorithmic side. That's just, that changed about every six months, by the way. The Google algorithm. The Google algorithm, okay. right? And that's based on when the big boys, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, they change their algorithm. Why do they do that? Because um, they want to be, they're competing against each other, right? To be the best marketplace of information. Interesting. They want to be able to be better than competitors at surfacing the information that is relevant to the end user, okay. right? When you go on Google, you pick Google, not Bing, because Google's probably going to get you a better answer. Right? You know think about it. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, and so basically, right, that's half of it. The other half of SEO is human language. It's, it changes every time somebody puts a new query into Google because new slang changes every day. What people are searching for changes every time there's a new search. It's a constantly, it's one of the most dynamic marketplaces in, in the world, right? And so what e com allows you to do is to pick up on those trending search terms and sprinkle them in, right? So you can, rather than being reactive to the marketplace, you can be proactive having this running in the background, identifying trending search terms and getting you to rank for these trending search terms. Oh, Josh is going to lead Salesforce next, man. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> awesome. You know? Yeah. yeah. You'll see that out of a product guy too. Often. Well done. Hey, yeah. No, it's... um. In, you know, e-com does two things, right? And it's, it's all this, you know, jargon and AI and SEO. And but at the end of the day, it's like, look, if you, a lot of brands and a lot of people have spent a lot of money on asset creation that are out there. They're just, they're just zombies. They've got no love. They're based on SEO from 2019. Uh, even if it's based on SEO from six months ago, there's a degradation and erosion that begins to occur the day that you publish, because like Josh said, human language at the core of this changes all the time. Search intent is based on language. So how do you best marry what someone is trying to search for, right? With the actual search results. And that's where AI really helps um, because it's difficult to play catch up. There's a tremendous amount of data behind this. So we're either, we're either going to let e you know, continually Reoptimize your underperforming assets to up level the, the entire portfolio. But then on the other side, it's a complete asset generator. So let's say that you're you're a, a large retailer and you pick up a new line of of clothing. And all you have from the manufacturer is a product name, maybe some limited information about sizes, colors, things like that. Material. You've got nothing else, right? There's nothing else that, that will help you sell this online. That's a real need too. So right now, what do you do? You send it outside, you hire a copywriter. Maybe you have people internally. It's expensive, right? And it takes time. So if, you know, for large retailers that need to do 2,500 or 5,000 product descriptions, I mean, you're talking about a long time to get that back. And you're going like this. We're doing the same day. Yeah. The same day. That's SEO optimized for, for that particular day. And then you roll it into e-com and it's on a consistent 30 day frequency of optimization after that. It's set it yep. and forget it. Surveillance, you've got to cover. Wow. And that's a slider as well, like maximum frequency. Up to, we can go up to a week. We don't do less than a week because um, you got you to re, be re-indexed. And so we're, we're also integrated with Google Search Console. We're pinging Google, letting, letting them know, hey, we got some new content here. Mm -hmm. But you know, we don't like to ping them too often, right? Just often enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so why would someone use ecom over ChatGPT? I think that's going to be a common question. Great question. Yeah, I think you and question. I think you've answered. I, I think you've given a few answers that apply to that question, but I just want to hear yeah, your no, no, response you to that. Yeah. Question. Um, to me, right? Using ChatGPT, it takes the manual step of writing a product description and makes it faster. Right? You're getting maybe maybe you're doing it in a fifth of the time that you were before. That's great. But it's not that great. With ecom, you're connecting your CMS, you're connecting your Google Analytics, your Google Search Console, and then you set it, forget it, right? We're, we're, that's still ultimately at the end of the day, when you're optimizing your own, right? You're using ChatGPT, you're reacting. Yep. Econ enables you to act. Mm. 
not react. So yeah, pretty much you're like taking the, like you're, I mean the whole, it's kind of great. Yeah, like, and it's very yeah, specialized. How, how, how much time of your day would you want to sit at a computer? Like typing. Typing, yeah. even yeah. prompting chat GPT yeah. to create these. Like, yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. that's a, that's not an efficient use of time. Yeah, and yeah. then the outputs are only going to be yeah. as effective as the inputs. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think why why input from your own brain yeah. right the, the the final data silo when you can yeah. be inputting from your database right the massive database the, the CMF database. the Shopify the yeah. WooCommerce the yeah. Magento that's great right hook up the real data how does like an Amazon do this stuff they definitely be doing they do this all day probably this is like definitely built in because Amazon mm -hmm. obviously has yeah. the largest catalog of products and descriptions yep. and that are that are majority like, organically found yeah. to insert yeah. but but also I'm sure they have some optimization going on so, so mostly Perhaps. mostly it's it's um right amazon is a marketplace now they do they are a seller of course amazon oh, basics course. massive yeah, yeah, yeah. but outside of amazon basics they they put that work on the seller That's on true. you know I, I've, I've got a very close friend of mine who's um an amazon seller he's doing like 10 million a year uh e-commerce there and this this guy he pays one thousand dollars for product description. Jeez. Wow! Because it's worth it. Yeah. Because he he's ranking first page yeah. for his his category, and that ranking is worth it. Can I use ecom per month? Spend a thousand dollars a month? You get all of them done. Not even. Not even yeah. a thousand. And then yeah. not even a thousand dollars. And yeah, that can be that can be a thousand. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. it's. Yeah. We operate at extreme scale. But then, you know, to Josh's point about his friend, you still, like, let's say you get that asset back from the outside agency. It's like, and you're like, hey, this looks good. There's been, there's been a lag time. You're like, all right, I finally have it back. Well, now you've got to get it in the CMS. You know, there's just, it's just still, like, it's a little bit better, but it's still clunky. You still have multiple steps. We wanted to centralize all of this into one location and be able to execute in just a few button clicks. Mm -hmm. And that's what ultimately was built because that's what, that's what, that creates an efficiency in terms of time and in terms of capital and how you spend your time selling and promoting your brand online. Definitely. I think we're also interested in like how this all came about because like obviously like ChatGPT, generative owl, it's like a new thing, right? And there's a whole bunch of people popping up left and right, like just plugging it in. Like you said, just making a, a, a candy wrapper in the fraud and then <laughs> boom, you're something you're brand new. Yeah. I'm curious, what is like your origin story of like writerly that like, obviously we know the story from e-com cause like that's where we're going right now, but like, how do we even think of this? So, Writerly was 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 founded a little little over a year and a half ago, um, and it was it was founded in in London, in the UK. And at that time, uh, there were some you know APIs into foundation models were just becoming a thing, but it was kind of this you know, subculture hadn't gone mainstream. Yet. So, ChatGPT has has a launch. Free Chat GPT. Free Chat Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you guys knew this was a thing before the ten months? Yeah. Well. 10 months before wow. ChatGBT, but but you've had other companies in the space, um, other generative companies like Jasper. Mm -hmm. They've been doing this for a while. Um, so you had some really early movers. And we were fortunate enough to get into a spot where we began to, to, to have a platform of ourselves to be able to test, to be able to bring users on, to get some data and determine, okay, what are we going to do? But um, so last summer... Uh, I moved the company from London to Nashville uh, simply because that's that's where I am. Uh, it makes uh, it makes it a lot easier. I in London. So uh, co-founder originally okay. was in London. Um, he had some other software products that that were concurrently sort of taking off at the same time. Um, I had some some other visions for for Riderly in terms of more enterprise application, more enterprise use case, and some automation. And so it made sense for for him to sort of off ramp, focus on his other things. I took the company, moved it to Nashville, and then um, through another contact that I had uh, in, in investment banking and in, in sell side advisory, uh, I was introduced to Josh and we had a call and he was he was employee number one. And I said, look, we've here's what we have. It's, it's early, it's rough, it does some really cool things. Um, but we have, I think it's our job now to uncover like where's the, where's the extreme value? Because even a year and a half ago, we kept running into, it's, it's, it's a hobbyist tool for people who don't have the time or the interest in like understanding prompt engineering, which is what prompt engineering. prompt engineering is, is how you create an output. Also, like this is the question you're asking. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's what it's your input. What right. is your, your instruction, your command. 
And so for non-technical people who don't want to spend time testing different prompts. What is up, New Money Talks fam? Super excited to hop on here to shout out our amazing sponsor, Treat. You got to check them out. Try treat.io, link in the description. These guys are changing the game. I know your ROAS is suffering. IG, Facebook, do these meta ads, they're... They're a pain in the butt right now. We get it. I know. But look, creative is the only thing you can control. But creative is so freaking expensive nowadays. But what Treat has done is they changed the game. They built this awesome platform that integrates with Google Analytics, Facebook ads, Shopify, Shopify Plus, Klaviyo, Recharge, you name it, they integrate with it. And what it does is it makes a whole bunch of product photography that you can push into meta push into your ig ads and just optimize helps find the best highest converting customers automatically these guys are changing the game i've never seen anything like this before they can make thousands and thousands of product images that you can use to optimize instantaneously into ig and facebook so look that roas is gonna go up you just gotta use treat it's kind of crazy we've been using it we told all our friends to use it and honestly we're telling you guys new money talks fam you gotta check them out Link in the description below. Amazing team, amazing technology. Honestly, a game changer. You'll thank us later once you plug these guys in. Like I said, check it out. Link in the description. Treat. Try treat.io. Look, if you aren't using them, you're doing something wrong. Now, back to the episode. And then adjudicating what the best outcome or output is. They just need it to be easy, right? But what, you know, and then I know what Josh is going to say, and it's, 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 Bad inputs on the front side lead to bad outputs on the back side, right? And that's what keeps generative AI largely right now in this hobbyist phase. So you start to look beyond that. Like, and it's nice, right? I mean, I use Riderly. I use ChatGPT. Everybody's probably played with it, tested around with it, discovered some cool things, but there's just not a lot of scale to a lot of this stuff right now. There is now in marketing automation, there's some other peer companies of ours that have done some outstanding work and built some really cool marketing automations out of generative AI. There's some other companies out there doing some really interesting things, um, you know, all across, you know, the market map. We chose to focus on e-commerce partly because we love data. Um, we, we, we invested in a data team very early on, constructed an awesome data warehouse. We connect data ourselves. And we said, what's really lacking in, in the e-commerce space is data connectivity, really. But, but beyond that, like the ability to create really good assets that lead to outcomes like increasing sales. Like you can't lose sight of the outcome at the end of the day. And um, so, yeah, so that's, that's how e-com was born out of Riderly. Riderly is, is growing, um, you know, month over month. We're seeing a lot of adoption, a lot of use, and we're still learning. Like we're still so early in generative AI mm -hmm. that, you know, I saw a headline said chat GPT experienced its first uh, month over month decline in, in usage or something. But <laughs> uh, everybody's trying to kill it. It's like rest in peace, chat GPT. It's not, it's going, it's not going anywhere. It's only going to get, you know, a thousand times larger than it is today. Yeah. Um, but we're just getting started. Like we're still so early um, that I'm excited. But, but to get back to the e-commerce part, everything's about data. It's all objective. There is no subjectivity. You can't hide. Ecom can't hide from performance right? You've got the numbers, you've got the data yeah. and it, it either performs or it doesn't. And so that's why we love that space because we can quantify, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can, we can get down to the dollar amount of what we're, how we can attribute what e-com is. Well, those people love, it's like, all right, I spent so much money on this thing, but it made me so much more. So yeah. I'm, it's a no brainer. Like if, yeah. if I turn it off then I lose all well, that money, yeah. why don't I ever do that? You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we have a lot of friends who like have started Shopify apps, stuff like that. I always tell them like, hey, if you do that, make sure you can like tag whatever you're making people pay right. to like what you're making them. Yeah, yeah. every day. Yeah, if it's above, you're you're always going to be in the clear. Like no yeah. one's ever going to delete that app, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're below, then it's like, well, or it's like it's kind of a cloudy gray area that you're just yeah. like, well, yeah. that's where a lot of agencies are right now. You know, it's, yeah, yeah there's a lot of reporting, true. but like for so long, organic SEO has been sort of this, this mystical, you know, well, we're not performing on the organic side because you need to, to invest more on the paid side, right? Or we need to do oh, this or your people would say, your website copy is terrible. When I can't do my job, yeah, your crazy. website copy is bad. It's yeah. like, forget all that. Like yeah. you, we, you've got tools out there to, to do this. And so we want to bring objectivity. And the best way to do it is from an organic SEO perspective, 
And I think if we do our, you know, if, if our data continues to trend and we, we see what we're seeing, that we may be in a position to, to be able to justify, hey, you can probably back off your paid spend. If we're yeah. doing our job on the organic side, you know, it's no longer an excuse or a reason just to try to pay your way through. You know, we have to be efficient and we have to draw. So you're going to say like, rather than like spending X, Y, Z dollars on Google to be right. number one, yeah. you're going to be number one. Because you yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you heard it. Yeah. Yeah. You heard it because you use e Yeah. 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 <laughs> cut, cut your ad spend in half, maintain your revenue. Right. Like reinvest yeah. that capital elsewhere. Yeah. Go out, buy, yeah. And buy more products. You yeah. know, it's, and coming out of COVID too, there's a lot of sellers that, that are, we're still sitting on a lot of inventory, right? You look at container rates coming out of Asia right now. The shipping markets are still like the, the macro economy is still trying to recover from, from COVID. Oh yeah. What it means is that people are still seeing a lot of product, but you know, most of those products have a digital presence that just aren't getting, there's no love being shout. And so look, you know, there's some tools that you have and I think Ecom will do a great job for those that are, that are out there and they're like, Hey, I've got to move some of this product. It's just sitting in a warehouse and I'm paying for it every day. Um, re-energize that digital portfolio, you know? Get this product out. Free yourself up to go out and and, and acquire more lines. Now, 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 another piece of it. I was talking about for if you don't have the digital portfolio, what should you do? I said use ecom, <laughs> create the digital portfolio. Made it right. Made it. So we got two really powerful use cases of the platform right now. I think my favorite use case is the optimization because I you know, I built the proprietary algorithm. It's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, and that's like recognizing which are your lowest performing assets and sprucing them up, bringing them up to the level of your highest performing asset. But then another really powerful use case of this platform is, tell us what data you have, tell us what data you want, we got you, right? And the way we do that is pretty crazy. It's, it's this like advanced type of modular prompt engineering. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, right, what we do on our like kind of back end is we're, the users input their data in the form of connecting their CMS, connecting their so analytics. Users are like the uh, D2C brand. Okay. D2C oh, brands like, or, or, um, or agencies, or, or agencies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on behalf of their, their end customers. Mm -hmm. But either one, right? You're connecting data, right? And we're ultimately using this data as an input into a prompt, into a large language model. Well, we're doing a lot of back end prompt. Like the chat GPT question you're asking. So you're using yeah. the Shopify data to make that question exactly. like the right question. We're like, yeah. The data right the prompt. Oh, it moves, removes the need to sit there and try to think, hey, what's what's the best way to do this? We're letting the data do it. And we've, yeah. Yeah, we've weaponized the incoming data uh, to be able to match high performing assets already in that catalog. Mm -hmm. And we're sending, we're deploying an army that says, all right, yeah. that high performer. You know, we're going to create hundreds or thousands just like it, and we're going to send it out to the market. Yep. yep. And we're doing as well fine tuning. So, custom model creation, not just your standard run of the mill GPT 4, right? This is a, a specialized model trained on your brand's data. We're retaining brand voice, we're taking in brand books, brand guidelines, and following them. Mm. Wow. Yep. That's big time. And that has to be manually inputted by the user, or can, that could be automatically extracted. So, the brand book itself, that's drag and drop a PDF. Yep. Yep. As simple as that. Yeah. Simple as that. Drag and drop. You yep. don't got to copy and paste all the text. No, no, no. Just drag and drop. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Literally, the software says read the PDF. Yeah. Wow. So let's put that But I mean, and that's, wow. that's like mostly, we can do that. We can also, some brands have it in their Shopify. Like Shopify lets you upload like, you know, certain things that are not at the product level, but at the store level. Yep. Same with Magenta, every CMS. Yeah. And we can also, if you have it in there, we can read it straight from the CMS. I have a question, actually for you more specifically. So like, you guys started this a year and a half ago, right? Mm -hmm. Give or take. Did you know all this, like all about, I should, this only existed for like two years. Like, how the hell did you learn out of years? It's a great question. <laughs> and like, you know, like also like the generative AI part, like the chat GPT part, that part, and also like the e-commerce part. Cause like, yeah. knowing the whole landscape is not easy. Like there's so much yeah. going on. Yeah. So, so. I, I mean, I think just my my ten seconds is that when you when you're doing this day in and day out, and 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 generative AI is such a fast moving market. I mean, there's a hundred new companies that are launching every day in the Gen AI space, and it's really hard to keep right. But you learn a lot, and we study. And I think one of the coolest things that was implemented by Josh inside of our company 
is something called a journal club. Okay. And what what we do is we try to take a scientific approach. He's a scientist by training, um, and we we treat we treat our company as 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 a laboratory, right? And we want to build processes to be able to measure the the efficacy of, of everything that we're building we're we're doing. But the journal club brings um, members of our team together every Friday, and we take a a, a peer reviewed public pub, publication from you know a source out there on generative AI on foundation models. And we talk about it. And this is something that 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 he brought um, that's been really good because, you know, I think in a lot of companies, you, you're sending Slack messages, you're saying, look, this competitor's doing, look, he's building this, blah, blah, blah. We don't care. I mean, we, you know, we do somewhat, but like we can only control what we're building. We only control what we do. Um, and I think it's awesome. I, I love to see the companies out there that are building similar, similar products. And ultimately, we're all going to benefit. Mm-hmm. We're going to learn from and and just taking things like a journal club to sit down and look at you know the transformer model, the origins of the transformer model, getting the CTO together with the the head of data in the same journal club setting to to all read and discuss um, some new some new published literature. So you're reading like like uh like call like universities yeah true yeah. as well. And so I I have a background in science. This is something I I brought with me from my time in laboratories. Oh wow! So I worked in. Bustamante Lab at Stanford for a little bit doing genomics research. I was at the Silver Lab at Harvard Medical School for a little bit doing uh, synthetic biology. And then during my undergraduate, I was um, with the Shaw Group at uh, Harvard doing um, earth and planetary science, like all um, a lot of oil and then earthquake research, just structural geology, basically what's under the ground, how does that move? It's, it's crazy to me how academia is like always a few steps ahead. So I went to Bernie from undergrad, I went to Cal mm-hmm. and I was there in 2017 to 2020. Mm-hmm. And in like 2017, they, they started the data science like department at Cal. Nice. And it became like the biggest department on campus, like 2017, 2018, 2019. Yeah. And everyone was like, cause everyone's like each, so like electro junior computer science. Yeah. Like that's like the hardest like topic or whatever, like mm-hmm. kind of like yeah. degree. But everyone started going to data science. I was like, why? Like, I, I, I had no, I, I couldn't understand why. Yeah. And as I started talking to people, and like, and now you look at 2023, you're like, well, now I know why. Yeah. But this is literally why. Because all of the data science, all statistics and just like yeah. models yeah. and matrices and all this type of stuff. Yeah. 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 It's kind of crazy. And like, I said, so like, I started a, uh, just kind of, this is like 2018. I had a company called Predictum. We were using uh, social media data, like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter running it through like NLP pretty much. And uh, Google has like the one with the picture, like you for um, like image search. Cloud, cloud, cloud vision, I think it's called. Like some fun with like images, like it's like pretty much uh, the like, images. Okay. Um, Recognition? Um, yeah, something like that. Got it. I didn't build it, but like I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. And um, we were pretty much predicting people's personalities on social media mm. and selling it as like a social media background check to like Airbnb and Uber. Right. That was like the whole business idea. Pretty much what happened to it though, I was like 19 at that point. We ended up on the front page of the Washington Post. And the headline was like crazy AI app from UC Berkeley tells you if like, it's like it was a whole like shit show. Yeah. And yeah, for yeah. API access, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but back then I was like, oh, this AI thing, like NLP, what is all this stuff? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And now you look now and you're like, what the hell? And it all came out of college. Yeah. Like yeah. Harvard, yeah. Stanford, yeah. Berkeley, MIT. It's like, what the hell? So that's actually so genius. It's like, Within the company, just like spend time reading the research. Yeah. Because yeah. that research is like not mainstream right now. That's going to come out probably in like two years, like in the yeah. market mainstream. Like, yeah. No, I like, I like to be always yeah. like, that's why I live in Brooklyn. I like to be on the cutting edge. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Brooklyn, you do? We got Bay Area. Good art. It's like the Bay Area. Good business. Yeah. 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 So, like Austin, this type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I know. There's a lot of, a lot of cool cities that have like a lot of, you know, a lot of really interesting dialogue happening. 100 and like i want to be i want to be that room i want to be conversing it's, it's interesting how you guys built a culture like that at the company too where it's yeah. like you're always learning because like you have to always learn you have to learn yeah. it's, it's, it's you're not learning you're failing pretty much yeah because like and failing and learning really the same thing you have to yeah. learn your failure and then keep going 100 yeah, percent. yeah and like i'm sure as you guys scale the company that's a big thing you're trying to instill in the company it's like, yeah it's huge i mean yeah, it's, it's, it's the backbone of everything that we do i mean because when you're in when you're in a an emerging marketplace yeah. you know and, and it's it's Kind of funny. I mean, there are certainly some some experts when it comes to AI. You know, really more at the foundation, right? And and at the computational, but you know, yeah. marketing experts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It's too great. But it's it's comical because there's really no experts right now, and we take this approach. And I think that the, one of the core 
one of the core things about Riderly is that we are, we want, and Andrush mentioned it, we want humility. At, at the- what is up, New Money Talks fam? Just wanted to hop on here real quick and shout out our amazing sponsor, ecom.ai. Remember, ecom with a K, E K O M dot AI. These guys are amazing, amazing team, amazing technology. Think what they do, right? You have all this content, all this all these landing pages, all these product descriptions all over your website, right? But you can never optimize them for SEO. Either you have to hire someone in-house, hire an agency to do them, cost so much money and take so much time. But with Ecom, what they did is they built this awesome, awesome generative AI software that plugs into your store, Shopify, Amazon, WooCommerce, Magento, even eBay for all of you old timers out there. And what they do is they optimize the whole entire website, boom, instantaneously. It's honestly insane. What they do is they drive so much more new traffic, sales, conversions to your website through SEO. You already have all this content online. It's ranking on Google. Might as well optimize it and rank it even higher. And Ecom is the best team, best technology out there to do that. Definitely check them out. Ekom.ai by an amazing company called Writerly. Check them out. Now, back to the episode. Beginning of everything that we do because we want to build things that are meaningful, that are useful and that drive a ton of value. And we find a, a lot of, you know, our satisfaction and joy in tackling some really tough problems. Like we enjoy this. This is not something that we want to scale and sell. And, you know, we're not, this is not an exercise really. I mean, we certainly want to eventually do that. But there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of cool things that happen along the way. And and learning is is incredibly important from the data team to the product team to the marketing team. You know, we want to involve our, our customer facing people who are our non-technical people to get them engaged in conversation at more of a technical level so that we're learning, you know, because if we ask questions and then we say, okay, well, if, if this, then that, you know, yeah. so it's, um, it's really interesting. And it also takes us away from sort of the, the day-to-day grind because we're, we're faced out in this. All day, every day, 24-7, 365. It's just fun to talk about research. Yeah. So look what look what look what happened over here. And it's not some people like from like crunch base. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's like, like this nature. Pub- it's like it's nature. Right? You're like outside, it's like, okay, I'm enjoying yeah. the world. This is real yeah. stuff. And it's like you get to take a step back and say, okay, there's like this is refreshing. Yeah. 100 And what I love about e-commerce as a space as well is because now journal club, I try every week. We we do two papers now. One paper in generative AI, one paper in the core science, like vector databases was what we were talking about last week. We we're going to be talking about that for a while. Um, but also one paper about e-commerce. Because e-commerce is such a fascinating space in terms of the tech landscape. E-com is built to be compatible with headless architecture and with composable commerce architecture. What does that mean? Oh, baby. I love asking the what does it mean because you just like spit out like, Give it for the lead yeah. All right, all right. Let's yeah, break yeah. it. Freak it on down for y'all. Uh, um, headless e-commerce. Headless e-commerce, that's what like Magento is built around. These more powerful big boy companies, they, they're using headless e-commerce. And what a headless e-commerce architecture is, it's a back end that can have multiple different front ends. And so what that really means is one database that can go to multiple different points of sale. So it connects to... Your own website, it connects to your Google store, it connects to your Amazon store, your Facebook marketplace store, it connects to every channel, right? So it, it's, um, it's one core data that then points out to many different customer facing storefronts as headless. And then composable takes that one step farther. Um, this is something I got hit to like probably about a month ago and it's been fascinating. I love, I love just understanding software systems for businesses, but how their tech stack combines, creates one organization. Cause it, it's just like oil, you know, it's like oil. It's like oil. How you get <laughs> oil, right? You got to have typically the best environment for oil starts with a shallow sea. The reason why that's where the most biomass is because you get a magnification effect of the sunlight. So you have more energy at the start and then that's got to get buried without any oxygen so that nothing eats it. And then once that's buried, it's got to get pushed down, but not too far down. Otherwise it'll boil. Right. But really 
you got to push it down hot enough that it does turn into oil. So, you know, there's, there's a range, right? But then you got to trap it. You need two types, two, two aspects of a trap to trap the oil. You need a capstone, something that's not very porous. Because the thing about rocks underneath the ground, over long periods of time, they behave like fluids. They flow. Rocks flow. Yeah, man. Really? Yeah. Like, think about it like magma, but instead of heat, it's pressure. Right? They behave like, like fluids over time. Rocks flow. And so it, the gas, the oil, right, will flow out if it's a porous rock. So you got to have like a really thick rock. But not just that. You also need a structural trap, like a dome, basically, right? Because otherwise, if it's just flat, it'll go outside. So to me, that's very similar to a tech stack for a company. Because, right, you got to start with the data. What is capturing the data, right? Pixels on your site. Maybe that's, you know, but you got to connect something to Magento typically for that, Google Analytics, right? Or, you know, maybe Segment. You know, Clavio has some stuff there too, right? And then, then it's got to flow right from your site through to your point of sale, through your ordering system, through your ERP. But then it's also got to flow then to your marketing platform to, you know, bring engagement, loyalty platforms, right? There are so many steps through which this data flows. It's very much to me like oil. And so a composable e-commerce architecture. Oh boy, oh boy. There's an acronym. I don't remember. It and it's like an ecosystem. That. Yeah. It's, so, so composable is all about modularity. Basically making your, your tech stack in such a way that you can swap out any part if a new better part comes out. Mm. So it's all about APIs integrating easily and flowing that data in a way that is like, easy to connect to. It's like a big river of data. You want to be able to be a tributary off that river, add another, you know, town to your village. They, they need water, right? They need the, the water of data. That's crazy. That's an analogy interesting. Right you, didn't know, you didn't know you were going to go here. I don't <laughs> think so. Right. Well, honestly, we don't, we, we don't, 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 we don't plan ahead of any of these. We, we, honestly, we, we, never, never, we never know. Like, we never know what's going to happen. All these things. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you about the thing you got on your risk. Right, uh, yeah, the Whoop app. Yeah, so I have I have the Aura. I'm, you got the Aura. Yeah, we're, we, I'm actually looking into the the Whoop, but I, I wanted to talk a l get a little sidetracked and yeah. talk about health and fitness. I saw you guys have a piece of fitness equipment in here. Right. You look like someone who might have been an athlete in, the, in you know in the past, high school, college, whatever. I want to talk to you about health and fitness. It's a topic that we talk about a lot with entrepreneurs because yeah. plays a huge role into uh, oftentimes the success of their company, the dynamic of their team, etc. You know, it's um. I love this device. I love the whip band. Um, it's all about physiological data, right? Our bodies are throwing off data. You know, e-commerce stores are throwing off them. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously there's an interest in data from my perspective, but, you know, being able to say, to take it from a subjective, this is how I feel. And to be able to pair that with objective data that says, like, based on these algorithms and these, these metrics, like, this is how you also should feel. And there's harmony between those two. Um, I think, um, health and fitness is, is, is important to me, um, because obviously at a startup it's, there's a grind, like it's, yeah. it's not, uh, it's not perfect every day. You're working hard, but you're, you're alongside people like Josh Chandler and Quinn and the rest of the team that are, that are sitting out there. Um, but you have to, you have to, you know, burnout and fatigue is, is real. And so I use it as a tool just to sort of, you know, some guardrails for myself. Right to make sure that I'm I'm good. I like the sleep performance on it. No, um, <laughs> that's one of my favorite things. So the only thing I use this for heart rate variability is another is another one that I like. I've had it for several years. Um, their software and their their UI's gotten really really good. Exciting to see kind of where we go. But for my time in healthcare, there's no better diagnostic tool than than something that's inside the body. Right. So surface electrodes and, and surface telemetry is good. But you don't get the high fidelity signal really until you go in, in the body. Interesting. This is the next best thing that's available, right? And so when we talk about pacemakers and things like that, like that's where that, that love and appreciation for diagnostic data um, for myself sort of comes from. Um, and, you know, I talk to a lot of other founders um, involved in, in, you know, various sectors and industries, but it all comes back to like, it's, it's hard to 
to lead and run a company when you're fatigued and you're tired mm -hmm. and it's real. And, and I've, I've talked to others that have gone through it. Um, and so it's just a good, a good way for me to sort of check and say, Hey, you know, we're good, but we're having fun, right? Like yeah. this is what we love to do. Um, I just also like to have surveillance behind the scenes. that's sort of, you know, always on. Yeah. Another question, Kyle, I never asked this guy. <laughs> horrible version of this. Do you guys do any, like, do you have any like morning routine? Any like cold shower, daily non-negotiable <laughs> schedule, stuff like that. I do none of that. I wake up, I just show up at work. <laughs> Kyle wakes up at like six in the morning and does this whole thing. You guys have anything like that? I'm yeah. This is funny. Um, <laughs> this is this is gonna get really funny. So I'm an early morning. I've I've always been that way. But yep. you know, I there's nights that that I go to bed later. Um, but it's like I have a hard time sleeping past a certain time. Right. And in the winter time, I was introduced to. To cold plunging. Oh man, he's I oh, love it. Okay. He has one his balcony. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 my my version of a cold plunge was I went to Tractor Supply and got a 110 gallon Rubbermaid tub. Okay, I have a stock tank. Uh, all right, so you get it right. <laughs> yeah. you see all this stuff online that's you know all these fancy setups, and I've got friends that are. I've got one friend that's a professional athlete that's got a, a, a water line that feeds into his, a purification system, and it's connected to ice, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's an incredible <laughs> setup. Yeah. So I'm out, you know, at night, like dumping 90 gallons of water out of this tub because it's been sitting there. Now, in the wintertime, yeah. it can sit there for a few days. Yeah. Like, you have to change this water. Yeah. You can't just let it sit. Yeah. Um, and then you come out in the morning, and you're breaking off a top level of ice. But I'll tell you, the interest, what happened was, when I started to do it, I'm a coffee drinker. It completely eliminated my desire to have a cup of coffee that morning. It was, it was, it was odd. And I've listened to Huberman and, and, yeah. and all this stuff, but there are some very real things that happen physiologically from exposing yourself to new street hole. Um, I did not think you were going to say yes to all of that. I did it for a couple months and then, Shit. but here's where I fell off the wagon. All right. Okay. <laughs> a confession. So when, when the temperature started to warm up, you have to change that water more frequently. And going outside in the morning and dumping out 90 gallons of water and trying to wrestle that. Too effortful. It was, and so then I started looking at what, what's, what's the next system? The $5,000 <laughs> ones, the $10,000. Exactly. No, you, you just, you just balling for $5,000. You really good. Uh, yeah. You love it? I haven't it's gotten it yet. Coming. It's uh, a couple of weeks okay. coming. Oh, oh, I don't want to give him a shout out too early, but <laughs> yeah. we'll see when I get it. But no, I mean, I would, I would take the giant frozen water jugs. I'd bring it out, you know, and every night I'd let it cool down in the morning and I'd come and I'd take them out. Problem is in the summer, it doesn't get cold enough. Nope. Yeah. I had these giant ice blocks because I'm not, I don't want to buy, you know, bags of ice or get them Amazon yeah. Prime at a certain time every morning. I don't even know if that's a thing. So, but it, like you said, the physiological benefits of it, you spend $5,000 on this thing. It helps your company make an extra million dollars a year. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm always oh, looking for, 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 can we consider a, a high tech ice tub a piece of our tech stack? I think we can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the office ice tub doesn't seem crazy. <laughs> Man, no, I'm, just, I'm pretty crazy. I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm oh, yeah. In the Bay Area, I bet there's at least five software startups. Oh, one. oh, yeah. There's at least probably 50. Yeah. Yeah, we're saying, what, what about you? <laughs> um, so I'm kind of the opposite. I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. My 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 available work hours. Um, you, like anyone at Riderly is free to schedule a meeting with me between the hours of 11 a.m. and 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Oh, God. So so I hire and like sometimes you know, I hire this guy. <laughs> and we start working together. And it's like the third day, and I called him. It's like. 9.30 in the morning. Now that's fine, right? I'm like, uh, hours go by. And it wasn't really anything important. And I'm like, okay, well, he's busy. And this is like day three. And he calls me. He's like, hey, what's up? I just woke up. And I looked at the clock and I was like, it's, it's like 12 like, with this guy. Like, what? like, what do you mean? Like, is this a thing? Or is this like a yes, one-time thing? And he's like, oh, no, this is a thing, man. <laughs> and so the first time in my career, and I've hired a lot of people, I'm like, I should have probably asked that question. Like, what, what's your, <laughs> when you're what's your availability, hours? right? I just sort of assumed that that my availability is like 18 hours a day. But that's the crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. part is that so there's mornings where I get up at 5:30 in the morning. Yo, last Slack message from this guy was like 15 minutes before I got up. Yo. Yeah. And then, but he's he's out till you know usually like 10:30, 11. He, he kind of reemerges, but he's uh this this guy's awesome. He just he's. He's a machine, yeah. but his hours are just totally opposite of mine. But it took some some adjusting, and actually, it works really well. 
um, especially with the interface between product and devs. Yeah. Because we have almost a, a 20 or 22 out of 24 hour coverage when we're building yeah. between product instruction, when product shuts down, devs coming in, yeah. they're doing their work. They're creating more questions. Some for cycle. It's, it's, and it's devs love that up at night too. Devs were yelling yeah. at night owl. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good because our CTO is a bit of a morning person. And so basically every night before he goes to bed, I make sure he knows everything he needs to be working on in the morning. And then when I wake up, he's done all this work and has some questions and we're ready to, yeah, you know, every day. Nice. Con- That's perfect. And we've got, we've got devs all over. We've got a dev in uh, Colombo, uh, Sri Lanka. We got some devs in uh, Colombia, Colombo, Colombian. <laughs> Good combo there. Um, but that's great because like there's always somebody up who can like, Fix a problem. Yeah, it's an emergency pops up or something like that. Yeah. You can ask yeah. exactly. That makes sense. The funniest thing is like people don't think about that with technology. Mm-hmm. It's like most people think you make it, you put it out, it works, and that's it. But like it's actually like after you make it, it's all the that's yeah the worst. Yeah. That's when the worst. Oh yeah, out. there's bugs, things break. Yeah. Like it's like, and, and it's, it's like, working twenty four seven. Yeah, but someone has to be up right. at all times just in case something does happen. You yeah. fix it. People don't think about that. Yeah, like, we have a lot of systems built in to recognize these problems, to, to identify them as soon as they are dis- discovered, as soon as they're felt by any, anyone. Exactly. And we have a lot of guardrails on our software because right, we, we know we're asking our customers for a lot of trust when they connect their CMS and they connect their Google Analytics. And we're very, very respectful of that security trust. Security is, is paramount, right? So information security, you got to start, it starts and stops it. Yeah. So you get that in place and then the other guardrails and processes. But these are things that are built over time. They're not, you know, we don't, we, we, you don't, those don't come out of the box with a startup company. Yeah. And like things, like, to your point, things break. Like the first, so we had this, this is a, this is a funny story. So we were invited uh, to a, a, a VC meeting uh, here in Brooklyn. This is uh, so, some months back. And we go up, we're on the, you know, we're on the top floor and they're, they're super interested in learning more. We'd have some really positive conversations and we're going to do a demo and boardroom there. It's a beautiful setup. And we get up there and I'm connecting uh, actually this iPad to, to, a, to a TV and we're going to show them the platform and our website's down. Like the writerly dot yeah, I know. Wow. is down. And I am trying to get- God's to not it. happy. And I was not happy. I'm not happy. It's calling you. I'm also- no, he's I'm like, Oh, you're- <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to be trying to get it work. So, so I'm, 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 I'm killing the, the air, the, the, the screen case. Yeah. Like I, this is airplane mode. Yeah. <laughs> airplane mode. We're shutting it down. People in the room are like, so we're on both sides. We're on the same side of the table. The VC's on the other yeah. side. So I see John screen. So I see what like, I, we, we both see what we're doing. I'm like, he's kind of, but I'm like, and so we're, we're not, you know, trying to get it under control. I'm like, I, I'm not going to tell these people what's happening. So I'm kind of messing with it, but it gets to a point in the room where people are like, you know, you're 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 a software like technology company. Do you know how to screencast your iPad? Yeah, no, the Wi Fi is on the Wi Fi is all working and all this stuff. But like, so we but closed we got out. It. But we have, but fortunately for our, for our for our app, there's a backdoor URL that was. Well, it's not like, even. But like, really, if I so say smart. it's not a backdoor URL per se. The issue is our website was down. That's our marketing site. It was a web to love issue. The app that we have built was not down, has never come down like that in that way. Cause we, we built on a very reliable architecture. We've got a React front end. We've got a Django back end. We're using like SQL database. It's all built in AWS. SOC 2 compliant. So, like, yeah. Oh, so right at that AI was just like, it's, it's like, having a, like it's having a Wix yeah. website. That's where, it. That's the marketing site. Yeah, yeah. That's where so, people, like, we direct people to that. And, like, cause that's, that's where the non technical people like me. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there and I'm uh, looking at him, like, what's happening? Like, this is the, of all times for, so it, it turns right. out uh, it was a web flow issue. Yeah. And, and there was some, there was a, a maintenance like, or something. It, it happened, it started 30 minutes before we walked in that VCD. You get it? Like, yeah. No idea. But that tr- you know, uh, that's an example, and it's, it's kind of funny after the fact. Like, it was, you don't ever want that situation to occur. Demoing great, everything worked. They, the they, they were not, they they were none the wiser. The app, the app was untouched. It was just a marketing site, and um, and so, but you have things like that that happen, right? I mean, yeah. That's the real world. You know, you have, well, that's the real, real world. That's the real, real world. And that's you can't trust your providers necess- Like, you know, there are certain enterprise providers, Azure, AWS, yeah. but even those guys. They will sometimes have a little blink of outage, for sure, right? Especially Amazon right now because they're scaling. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. right. Because Amazon, 
they are right as they're entering they're really making some big plays in the, the generative ai space as being kind of the back end model provider or like the the server side so aws is getting even more like uh but i mean they're, they're doing a good job i gotta say i have a lot of respect yeah. for their technical team a lot of respect they make a very good product and i think they're scaling well but there have been a couple one or two hiccups yeah, 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 we yeah. ran into one of those but we have systems in place, yeah. right, to protect, yeah. to safeguard, lock it down. We, we, when someone trips the alarm, lock it down. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Now, this is this. I think this is like a very, very insightful, like yeah. learning, awesome conversation. I, I really, but I really, this. I had no clue where we were going with this. But honestly, <laughs> we were brought to good places. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Like I'm happy we're in Brooklyn too. Yeah, we just in Brooklyn, beautiful office. Yeah. Yeah. Really. yeah Brooklyn, it's, just, it's the best, man. <laughs> I lived in Manhattan for a little bit. Never again. Like Brooklyn's <laughs> where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, I think Brooklyn and Nashville are complimentary. Yes. Nashville's amazing though. I've been out there. Nashville's great. There. There's still like there's this element of you know, you know, it's create both both cities are very creative. There, mm -hmm. there's a lot of sort of like almost blue collar industrial grit that still exists. Um, and and you just have some people that are ready to to get after it and go. And these are emerging places. It's fun to be around people. Just such good energy and and just awesome talent. So, hundred percent. You asked about another. Yes, earlier about uh, morning routines and and the morning routines. Every every day when I talk to this guy, hey, what's up on the phone? Every day, every he's like, it's another great day, bro. That's what every single day. That's how the conversation starts. Every day is a great day, and it's a great day, and 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 it's awesome. But we're we're having fun. We're growing, and um, you know, having opportunities like this to chat with you guys. 100%. Yeah. Before we let you guys go. We want to make sure the audience knows where they can find you guys. Aren't you guys want to be found specifically or just like e calm right? I'm not going to drop my address. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if you have a, honestly, you're big on Twitter, like Instagram, yeah, so yeah, like and social media, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Or a website, like, like where do people find you guys? Yeah. yeah. Um, can I send you the links? And like, no, we're, we're, yeah, we'll put them in the description. Yeah, okay, yeah, of course. Go, go, go. Check the description. But, but HTTPS colon backslash backslash <laughs> writerly.ai. And ecom.ai, e k o m dot a i. These are such great domains. Domain. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. definitely good domains. One hundred. Yeah, I'll credit to John on those. <laughs> Thanks, John. John got the domains. They're yeah. they're fire domains. Yeah, pretty well. We've got some others that are tucked away that we're we're excited about. Oh yeah, we've got, got a couple of these. Yeah. Look, look, we got good ones. All right, all right, good ones, bro. One hundred percent. Then on our end, we do this thing called the uh, the gentleman's agreement. That's yeah, yeah. put all this value out for free. So, we bring on like AI experts like you guys. Mm -hmm. We bring on awesome guests, awesome founders, awesome just people in the space all the time. Yeah. And all we ask for a few little things. Those few little things are just make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. My pleasure. Tell a that friend. Easy. Like everybody on the podcast, everybody watching the podcast is like, that's how we grow. Yep. Any day of the week, man. We, we started this to help people like learn about business, how to grow a business, how to find like leaders in the space, business, like yeah. raise money in a business, kind of like newest industries in business. So all we ask is just to share, you know, because like that's how we get oh, our, our pleasure into the yeah. ecosystem. We're all about growing the ecosystem. So thank you very much. We love it. Yeah. Our, our pleasure. We'll yeah. any way we can. Thank you guys. Yeah. Check, Check out Riderly and Ecom, and we'll see you in the next one. Later.